The annual Scottish Game Fair at Schoon is one of those events where people from the country get together to show the world more of what they do and who they are. And it's not just country folk who attend. Indeed, and we certainly welcome the urban population, as you call them, whether it be from Dundee, Glasgow, Perth, Inverness, Aberdeen and south of the border. Wonderful, because you know, they, they do need to understand why the countryside is being managed. And here on the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust stand, we do have these very clearly planned central exhibits, which help them understand why moorland is being managed for grouse, but the benefits of managing it, for example, for grouse to the non-quarry species, such as wader species, songbirds, many of which are in declining populations. So it's a great opportunity to inform as, and educate to young and old, boys and girls, as well as giving them a fun day out. But it's also a place where serious issues are raised. Country sports, hunting, shooting, fishing, are worth about £250 million a year to the rural economy. This year's unusually harsh winter has had a major impact on wildlife across the country. The winter was, as, as you correctly state, one of the toughest for many, many years. Um, the effects of that winter uh, were um, quite dramatic in some areas of Scotland, uh, but much less dramatic in other areas. Uh, for instance, in the, in the north of Scotland, Russia, Caithness and Sutherland, there were significant losses of, of red deer. 25% losses have been reported. On the west coast, on the other hand, uh, there have been relatively low numbers of deer which have, have uh, died through natural mortality or exposure. There have also been pretty significant losses in the roe population, particularly in Angus, Deeside and parts of the northeast of Scotland. And again, the, the impact on those populations and the, the revenue gained from stocking uh, those animals is immediate. In some estates, yes, they will have lost either mature stags that couldn't make it through the winter or in some situations hinds, normally pregnant hinds, so recruitment will be reduced. So there will have to be some reshuffling there. Grouse moor managers may have suffered as well, um, especially moors that didn't have a lot of deer because the deer could then break through the hard packed snow and let the grouse feed. In some situations we know the grouse have left the moors almost completely. If they haven't returned obviously there won't be any stock to shoot in August. The snow got so deep that we had grouse moving off the hills in huge packs. There were stories from Kelso of them setting up trees and and people trying to feed them, but they were dropping dead after three or four days. But I know from personal experience, we fed a lot of our deer, and we fed hares even, and up and down the country we could hear stories of keepers taking big tractors out and trying to clear a lot of the snow. Grouse coming in behind the tractor like seagulls in behind a plough. We had seven weeks of snow, and. And during that time, I think if we hadn't been feeding pheasants with tons of weight, because everything was coming to eat it, I think we'd have lost a hell of a lot more of our wildlife. There will be an economic impact. Um, the, those animals that have died are obviously not available to be shot. People will reduce culls, um, and there is an impact at, at the state level, uh, but that knocks on to game dealers, game processors, hotels, accommodation providers, um, and the whole and the, 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 the support system behind the deer stocking industry. The stocking season has just started in Scotland. Grouse shooting starts in a few weeks. But given that message, it could be that the cost of doing so will rise sharply and many who would be in the field may have to shoot at clay pigeons instead this year.